please come around, please come on the, on the deck in front of the stage. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here with us today. Um, my name is Terry Proto, I'm CEO of Virtual Reality Marketing. Uh, again, I want to welcome all of you here in the old space. And I also want to welcome and thank everyone who's watching us online on AW Live as well. Um, and for starters, I want to give a few words about us. Um, you know, as I keep saying, you know, for the past few years, we've been on this mission here at VRM to help connect enterprises with leading VR, VR, metaverse creators. And over the years, we've built this large showcase of immersive companies. On our site, we've got more than 3,000 uh, XR creators listed, 600 AR and VR studies listed across all, all business verticals. Um, and with our group on LinkedIn, we are the largest online XR community. We are closing in on 70,000 members on Reality Innovators Network. And our goal is really to be a guide to the business metaverse. We want to inspire, educate, and help facilitate immersive business. Um, one question we get a lot, actually, is uh, if you need help, like people always need help, have trouble finding the right metaverse partner, can help, and you should totally be in touch. You have uh, my LinkedIn coordinate and Sophia's LinkedIn coordinate on the wall behind. You can get in touch at hello at the reality And before we get further, I also want to take a minute to thank our team. We've got Michelle and Carlos and the Red Cowboy team hats here. We are making sure that everything is running smoothly for everyone today. Um, this space has been created by our partner, M2 Studio, and we want to thank them for hosting us in this beautiful environment. Um, we are also, for the second time now, broadcast live on AWE Live, and really excited about that. And, um, and finally, some of you may be new to our space, and we've done our best to include some networking tips. Uh, so if you go behind the bar, be behind you, we have some panels to help you with networking tips. And finally, about today, um, what we want to talk about are the best use cases of XR for business. And you know, when we talk about the metaverse, I think a lot of people are confused about what's the purpose. It's like Yes, it's a network of 3D world, but you know, what do you do once you're there? Like, is it a game or, you know, what do you do? What's happening? And the answer I like to give to people when they ask me is that well, on our website, we've collected more than 600 case studies because you have big and small businesses who have successfully deployed XR technology, AR, VR, metaverse application over the last few years. And usually looking massive advances for ROI in the process. And right now, like today already, the metaverse means serious business. And when we were thinking of who to invite to talk about this, we felt that the Glimpse Group was the perfect match because a unique organization who has successfully deployed AR, VR applications across pretty much all verticals, education, corporate training, marketing, healthcare, you know, you name it. So I'm very excited to welcome DJ Smith and James Watson today. These guys, give them a warm welcome and Sophia, I'll let you take it from here. Right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today, DJ and James. Um, I've known you guys for quite some time. I've actually had both of you guys on the VR Air Association podcast um, separately um, throughout the years. Um, they are part of the executive team at Games Group. Um, it's an ecosystem of XR companies that serve enterprise companies um, uh, across a variety of, of verticals. Um, so I'd love to, to get into that because you guys have really a, a global perspective on the market because of all of these industry sectors that you guys serve. 
um, and, and all the different types of services that, that you provide under that umbrella. Um, and you guys actually recently merged with the company that I actually started with in this industry, um, Brightline Interactive, so congratulations on that. If it wasn't for Brightline, if it wasn't for Tyler, I wouldn't be here today. So I will give him credit there. <laughs> and so I wish the best success for that as well. Um, so without ado, we'll go into introductions for you guys and how this works is um, we'll just do a few questions. Um, I do have, I have many questions, but I know that um, you guys, the audience, only has lots of questions and I'm trying really hard to get to all of them each and every time. Um, and in the case that we don't, um, please feel free to reach out to either Terry or I or EJ or James. Um, and we will definitely get them answered after the presentation, uh, either in the networking session or afterwards um, via separate communication. Um, so we'll go for about like 20 or so minutes. Um, please um, raise your hands. I believe there's a hand raising option here. If not, Michelle will initiate that. And we will go through a couple questions and then get to yours after as well. Okay, so why don't we start with the introductions. Um, uh, DJ, why don't you go first, and then James, um, let's follow up with that. Just give us a brief background on who you are and, um, and how you landed at Glimpse. I'm really excited to be presenting, especially in a real VR headset experience. Um, I've attended a bunch of these events, and um, this feels right to me. Um, whenever I'm attending an XR event in, in a Zoom, I, I just always feel like uh, we're missing out a little bit. So thank you for, for being a trailblazer and uh, starting these events and using a true VR platform to do it. Uh, so that, that's really important to me. Um, so uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, yes, I'm, I'm a co-founder of the Grimms Group. I got involved in the industry uh, as a community manager, so I run uh, the New York VR Meetup, um, which is one of the largest, and I've been doing that since around 2013. Uh, very early adopter of the tech, so I was in alt space back in 2014, and it's amazing to see uh, the progression of the technology. And then in 2016, met my current partners at Glimpse, um, and jumped full in uh, to uh, basically get into the industry and provide AR and VR services uh, for uh, enterprise solutions. Uh, I'm the chief creative officer within the organization, so uh, I review most of the content uh, that's making being made across the uh, organization. Um, organization is in many different industry verticals uh, so that's one of the, the more unique things that I can offer is uh, is really a, a view on what's happening across the entire industry um, and with that I'll kind of kick it over to James excellent thanks CJ um, yeah it's great to be here it's um, it, yeah, it does feel like a, a good use of our technology and not uh, you know talking about it and not actually doing it so it's great and uh, I think it's a brilliant environment. So Terry and Sophia, very good to be here. Great fun. So I think before um, before I, I give you the sort of a little bit of a story as as to how I've come into the this sector, and also tell you a little bit about the group, I think we're going to play a quick video just to give you a sense of all the different things the Glimpse Group does, which I think is what makes us absolutely unique. The Glimpse Group is a virtual and augmented reality platform company comprised of a diverse group of wholly owned subsidiary companies. Each subsidiary creates cutting edge VR and AR software solutions for leading enterprises in marketing, architecture, engineering, manufacturing, healthcare, education, retail, food, and financial services. As part of the Glimpse Group ecosystem, our companies leverage each other's strengths, focusing entirely on their core competencies, developing higher quality software products, shorter time to market, fewer redundancies, lower costs, and significant go-to-market synergies, all in one place. At the forefront of the VR and AR industry, the Glimpse Group is pushing the boundaries of what's possible and enabling the creation of the metaverse. So there you go. Um, there's, there's a lot there. 
Um, and that's almost part of the challenge, you know. Um, the Glimpse Group has uh, an ecosystem of um, subsidiary companies, uh, 13 subsidiaries uh, currently at the moment, and we offer solutions across, as DJ said, a number of different sectors. Um, and I think that the unique aspect of that, and, and actually the, the model, you know, isn't even particularly, um, you know, sort of prevalent in other sectors, but the, the, the brilliant thing about the Glimpse Group, the reason why I joined, and I'll come on to that briefly uh, in a second, the reason I joined is, you know, it brings together, you know, some of the best solutions in the industry, it brings together great minds like DJ, who uh, who is, uh, you know, a bit of a, a, a pro within the sector and has been involved, as you said, in New York um, uh, VR meetup for so long. It brings together, you know, expertise, it brings together the technology and also the commercial acumen. And that's one thing that really attracted me is, is you bring in the likes of DJ who, who, you know, has lived and breathed particularly VR for, you know, what, 10, 11, 12 years, DJ. Um, and then you add <laughs> some really strong commercial acumen uh, into that. And then that really is a, a very, very uh, potent mix uh, to bring into the mix so you know that's definitely what attracted to me i've come in as chief marketing officer um i joined just over four months ago so i'm still pretty pretty new to the organization um and you know that's that's what we bring to the market we bring together all these solutions across different sectors across vr AR, moving into other areas such as artificial intelligence um and it's 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 a brilliant environment to be in because the benefits for not only our customers but subsidiaries is that sharing of knowledge it is a genuine ecosystem uh, we share knowledge across the group so if, if one subsidiary is working in a certain sector they've hit a certain challenge that's more than likely going to apply to other sectors as well so that knowledge can therefore sort of you know percolate through um the ecosystem maybe osmosis would be a better one for ecosystem i think osmosis is better we'll go with osmosis mm -hmm. um and you know and then we can share all those experience understand it you know scale up where we need to so you know i joined having been in this industry this sector you know i feel really lucky to have been involved for i think it's almost 10 years now uh, the first DK1 is when I, I managed to sort of drift into the, the VR environment, luckily um, working at a, a creative agency where a bold customer bought a project using the DK1, which uh, is bold or crazy. I'm not sure, but probably a little bit of bold, a little bit of crazy. Just the mm -hmm. just the sort of perfect, the perfect sort of customer you want to have, really. And that got me into it and, you know, setting up teams in creative agencies. And I moved over to um, more the enterprise side. Um, and then on to working with uh, with the Imps Group. So super happy to be here. Looking forward to some questions, maybe some testing ones as well. Luckily, I've got TJ next to me, so I can just bat it onto him if I can't answer it. So yeah, great to be here and uh, looking forward to chatting. Yeah, and DJ, I think you actually started the New York City meetup like years ago. It's like one of the biggest meet ARVR meetups in the country, right? How many members does that That's have right. now? Yeah, so we are about 6,300 members, although we've been kind of on hiatus due to a stupid little thing that affected the world. Uh, but I'm really <laughs> excited to to get back uh, into in-person events, and I think we're, we're really close. That's I awesome. kind of was hoping before the summer, but now it looks like uh, the, the fall will be the right time. Um, That's uh, awesome. I miss the community. Hey, well, 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 here we are now, <laughs> virtually, <laughs> <laughs> talking the talk. Um, um, and the reason why I bring that up is because um, I think that feeds in really well to kind of the the mission of Glimpse, because you, you know, you, both of you actually have come from a, an extensive background of, of within the technology. And so you've been exposed to um, the industry from, you know, the beginning of like the commercialization days of AR and VR. And so like, how does that translate into um, the investments that Glimpse has chosen to make um, in terms of the capabilities and offerings of the companies that, that are now subsidiaries? Sure. So Glimpse kind of works as a portfolio um, in the XR space. And we've, we've tried to find entrepreneurs and, and businesses that fit the certain verticals that we see huge opportunity. Um, and it's kind of a sliding scale because I think 
XR will be pervasive across all different industries. They're going to hit at certain different times. Um, I'm sorry. I think like sorry, right, I think now. We're getting major feedback from somebody. I'm not sure who it is. Um, but please make sure you mute yourselves if you're not DJ. Okay. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, DJ. No problem. So uh, as I was saying, so Glimpse is really a portfolio and uh, we very early on designated uh, different industry verticals where we thought we would have um, lots of potential. Um, and what's kind of clear is that all of those potential um, verticals are still valid, but certain ones hit earlier than others. Um, and what's great within Glimpse is we can even slide resources and kind of attack the verticals that um, are hitting right now, but we can scale back on the opportunities that may not be quite ready yet, um, but we still have presence in those verticals, we still have knowledge, we're still gaining information so that when those opportunities mature, we're ready to hit them running. I mean, where did that, where did that kind of start um you know from back from when you uh when you started in this industry like where did you see kind of the early adoption of this technology how did you, it, it evolve to where we are today and kind of why did you see that why do you think you sure that that was the case so i think you know we are an AR and vr firm uh, in thing um but in terms of business money and revenue uh, definitely the ar uh, is a little bit more available specifically on the marketing branding side of things so i think right now that's that's probably the most active sector within our portfolio and, and probably within most uh, because everyone has a phone um, and there's huge advantages to using augmented reality to either create a snapchat filter or place your ikea um, couch in your room um, the VR side of the business is is growing every day, and advancements in hardware um, definitely propel things forward. And we've, as an industry, have graduated from single vibes in a conference room to a handful of headsets to now there's thousands of Quest headsets and Pico headsets going into organizations. Um, so it's really exciting to see that that evolve. Um, and I think right now on the VR side of things. Uh, training is is a huge low hanging fruit um, because of the the really measurable value uh, learning through doing can provide. Um, so, and I think if we look outward even more, um, we'll go from the marketing branding to the training, and then I think then the true metaverse of our entertainment, our living a portion of our life within this experience, that's kind of coming. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to just see it evolve, but I'm also kind of patient and, and it takes time and it's okay that it's going to take time. It's funny. I, I actually see that directly re relating and translating to um, scalability of content and hardware um, and deployment. So like if you, if you, if we look at, you know, some of the entertainment, marketing activations it's it's very siloed right it's like they're providing a headset or two or whatever the hardware is and you know, usually at like a place based location now it's converted more to maybe mobile ar and stuff like that because because now we have the capability um and it's a very specific content experience for a specific campaign right so it's almost like at the eoc level of of content development and then training um, you get like one step higher where it's again in a contained environment where you know we, we have a, a set number of we have of 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 uh, headsets or ways that we know we're going to deploy um, in a secure environment. We're developing a a set of modules and and then scaling it depending on the needs of that entity and that enterprise. And we know exactly how we're going to deploy it within you know that that bubble almost right that contained bubble and then the metaverse like you're saying is more of that expansiveness of now we're talking about adoption you know across industry sectors across consumers um allowing you know the um, um allowing for the creation of different content experiences from you know anybody from like a freelancer to the non-technical creator to like enterprisers that are getting into it and having it all be like an interconnected um space where 
you know, now we have the the hardware and the interoperability to be able to to do that across <laughs> different um, different mediums and platforms. Um, something I just thought about right now, actually. So I think that's um, um, mm. su super uh, interesting. I think actually, Sophia, a really interesting point you make there is uh, about the sort of POC and and sort of being able to expand beyond that because it's really easy to as an organization to run a POC because you're not really integrated into the organization as a whole. It's very isolated. Quite often what I've found, you know, having been in the enterprise sector for a while, particularly from a VR perspective is, you know, what are your, what are your plans beyond the POC when it, you know, uh, not if or when it's successful? How are you planning for success? And it'd be like, oh, uh, uh, you know, we haven't really thought about that. Well, guess what? If you run a POC and you get some great results for it, you need to have a plan for how you push on into the organization. And I think previously, you know, in the past sort of four or five years, how you pushed on was a real challenge because you didn't have all those things you talk about, you know, easy to scale headsets, uh, etc. So I think that mentality of, of trying this technology and sort of thinking about, OK, well, how do I kick on from this POC that was quite easy to sell in because it's not a huge mm -hmm. cost. Um, you know, it's not a huge disruption to the organization, but what is the next step? Um, and I like to think now that organizations who are, you know, for, for many different reasons, looking within the immersive tech uh, sector for solutions, partly driven by, you know, the, the, the um, somewhat, you know, overhyped um, sort of introduction of the term metaverse, which I'll take as a good thing because it's getting our profile up and, you know, uh, profile is good because people are looking at it. But I think now they're starting to think, well, how do you scale this? You know, it's not just $50,000 POC, it's mm -hmm. properly invested in. So that I think is, is, is an evolution of the market that has changed certainly and changing over the past sort of year or so. Yeah, and, and, I, and I talk about this all the time in terms of, um, the the database that VRM has on the website in terms of the, the creators and the the use cases is that no longer does an entity have to invest in their own EOC to be able to understand what the ROI is when we have these yeah. um, you know we we have these trials already been done by other companies or entities in their sector and they can kind of refer back to that now um, and then able to almost scale immediately and trust that their investment is worth it, um, you know, because it's already been done before. Um, so I think yeah. that's, that's um, you know, it's information and data like that that's super valuable to both our industry so so we can, you know, do better at what we do um, and refer to those use cases as well as, you know, companies that are looking to invest in these solutions that they know where to look to be able to kind of validate their um, their investments before they make them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, and, <laughs> and so James, I, back to what yeah, you were ahead. saying. Um, I, I have one question I like to ask also because I think it's really important when talking about those POCs is what is your definition of success? Because when building, you know, one of the mm -hmm. prototypes and when building, you know, these first applications, it's also really important I find to you know, set the expectations and, and set what are we expecting, what are we going to get from this thing? It's a new thing yeah. we're going to bring, going to be changing. What's your take on this? So, so uh, I mean, I can answer that. The, the measure of success is actually dependent on what that initiative is. So that is actually asked and answered individually on each opportunity because the measurement of success for one client and one initiative is not necessarily going to be the same for another client. Totally yes, agree, DJ. You actually stole my answer because that's exactly what I was going to say. It's it's totally, you know, gosh, we're so aligned. It's just amazing. It's true. It's 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 horses for courses, right? Um, it is you. You know, it's hearts and minds. You know, something a term I used to use for. What do you need to achieve from the POC? Have you got a? Is it about heart or is it mind? So do you need really hard data to come out of it to convince your CEO, your CFO, or whoever? Or is it actually you want something that, you know, you put on, you know, you put a VR experience or an AR experience and they just go, oh, my God, that's incredible. That's absolutely amazing. We have to do this. So, you know, ideally, it, it's a combination exactly of both. It's, I mean, ideally, it's got but, but it's your audience. I mean, to DJ's point, it's yeah. your audience. You know, is your audience someone who's going to look at, look at hard data as an outcome? Or is it your audience, someone who's going to look at going, I see the potential. Um, and so, yeah, exactly what 
Jay said, it, it's whatever fits. You want to get from a POC into a full rollout and just do whatever you need to do in order to get to that if you believe in what you're doing. I think right. one okay. one universal thing, and you hinted to it too, though, across the board, especially if you're using VR technology, you have to make it amazing and you have to make it simple and you have to make it fun. If you're going to force an enterprise use case where you're putting somebody has to put this crazy thing on their head, you better make that experience enjoyable um, or else you're just not going to get people in and you're not going to have success. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And um, uh, I know we have some questions, but I'm just going to wait a couple minutes. I'm going to uh, ask one more question. Um, please do raise your hand. I know Roy Rogers had your hand up for a second. Please do raise your hand again and we'll get to you first because I know you had a question for a while, but keep those hands raised and we'll get to those questions in a couple of minutes. Um, I wanted to move through because we have like a lot of people that are obviously in the XR industry um, with their own companies here. And um, you guys are obviously in the business of measuring the success of those companies as well. Um, how do you measure the value and success of those companies and, and how do you define success or perhaps the promise of success with the companies that you guys have or, or have invested in, um, if anybody else is, is kind of looking at um, those success metrics for themselves. Sure. So I can answer this. Um, so in the early days of Glimpse, uh, we were really looking for the right type of individual because it is such a collaborative nature. It has to be somebody who kind of buys into that ecosystem um, in specific verticals where we saw opportunity. Um, last year, we were fortunate enough to go public, so we're uh, one of the first enterprise uh, AR VR providers on NASDAQ. Our ticker is VRAR, if you want to check us out. Um, but being a publicly traded company now, um, our mergers and acquisitions tactics has kind of uh, shifted a little bit. We're no longer looking for smaller entities. Um, and I ideas we're actually looking for established entities um, with products that are scaling you know we're we're excited about folks that have gone on this journey with with us uh, and have been in the space for many years um, and they've seen seen success um, and it's a it's a pretty easy leap of faith to say that if you've been successful and you've made it to five or six years into the industry and you have positive revenue, um, that's a really telling sign of, of what your future holds. Um, so that's a, a really good metric uh, that makes things easy for us. Yeah, so just keep growing year after year. Yeah. <laughs> you easy, know what, guys? Huh? I have a question. I have a question. Talking of questions. Can you, you know, you've got this perspective and, and you've got those certain companies. Um, DJ, you were saying that you've seen that your AR use cases are going faster than your VR use cases, probably because much larger user base, you know, everyone has a phone or a tablet. If you were, you know, difficult question, but if you were to pick out of all the companies and out of all of the use cases, what's your top three? Like, what are... <laughs> you know, either, and the metric would be either most successful in terms of business, or as you were saying, like, was the most exciting in terms of product. Are you able to do that? So you can get by use case. I've, can you? I've been asked this many times, and it's it's kind of like know. asking a parent who's your favorite child. Uh, right, right, right. So I think all of the sectors that we're in have huge potential. Um, definitely some of the sectors need to um, wait a little bit more till the opportunity is right. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you know one sector is more exciting than any other because it, it just slides all the time. Um, and there's right. each one of our entities has great things happening across the board. Um, what I find really rewarding is that each one is in a different sector, and I get to spend my time kind of taking deep dives into these little sectors, um, which is like fascinating for me. One one new company we got, uh, it's called Pulpo. Um, they joined our division called Curiel, and they do virtual makeup try-on, um, which I think is an enormous opportunity. And, and about you know a couple months before uh, they joined us, I could say I pretty much knew absolutely nothing about women's makeup. Um, and now I feel like I can talk to talk with my 16-year-old daughter like nobody else. <laughs> um, and the, 
and the more time I spend in that space, the more I understand the <coughs> intricacies of that industry and what things move. And it's a massive, massive industry. And it's a massive opportunity because virtual makeup try on has real value uh, for consumers. Um, right. So, right. you know, that's just one little example, but I could, I could kind of say that for all of our different entities and it's just a matter of right. timing. Talking of Curio, so I'm not an expert of virtual makeup, but I've seen, for instance, the virtual watches try on. Uh, I've seen one recently on LinkedIn where you had, it was try on and a configurator at the same time. So you could try the watch and then you could select all of the various materials and, and the faces and everything. And that was really impressive. Yeah, Qreal, we are <laughs> truly masters at 3D modeling, um, getting reflections, glass, all of these is real technical art challenges. Like they, they seek them out. Um, and and they attack them um and you know i just have nothing but respect for that entire team um the way that they position themselves the the way that every piece of content they put out is just top 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 level um right. and Brilliant. uh you know the that their success is is based on that um so it's really really exciting to see that organization grow um and really the sky's the limit for them Right. And actually, yeah. on that front, uh, Terry, they they did um, they did a campaign with Bolle um, sunglasses, uh, which was a right. much as you saw with the um, with the watch, which I think is a, a fairly early sort of prototype a, a, a example. And you know, they worked with Bolle virtual try on of sunglasses. You could also look through them, so you see the tint, the difference in the different tints, the different lenses, and that was phenomenally successful. Um, I think four hundred and fifty six percent up uptake in sales wow. on this particular model, which was okay. You know, maybe slightly exacerbated, but it was still an incredible, um, you know, upswing in their sales. And I think that comes back to DJ's point that virtual try on because the barriers are so low. No, um, is just an area that I think is is really primed to to take off because you know it's it's easy, right? It's and it's adding a huge amount of value. Oh well, so yeah, I, I feel like people were using people were using you know AR uh, AR filters before they even really knew what AR was. So yeah, yeah 100% definitely. that's a low hanging fruit. Um, okay, so we have a couple questions. Roy Rogers, if you're still in the room, please raise your hand again, and we'll get to you. But I don't see you on the board right now, so we'll start with Danielle. Um, and Michelle, if you would pass the mic. All right, Danielle, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, flexion probes are awesome. I, I love using them in Unity. But it, it's interesting, like, so the industry, I've been in this industry for a long time. Um, you guys don't get scared, the fact that it's all based on one company, Facebook, which is losing massive amounts of money and... It, it all hinges on the Oculus Quest and all those kind of things that don't necessarily have the power to do a lot of the things that we want to do. Well, we, I mean, we're hardware agnostic, so we pick the right solution for the job. Um, definitely, we have a lot of um, uh, Quest 2 deployments, and we're a partner with Facebook and Meta, and, um, you know, they... Or as <laughs> they're in a challenging position, but they are they are trailblazing, right? If if they didn't exist, most people wouldn't have access to a true VR headset. Um, but we also have deployments with the other headset manufacturers, and then obviously on the AR side of things, that's kind of independent of it. Um, so I I do fall in this uh, in this camp of of. Facebook and Meta has has blaze trailed and and I'm wearing a Quest 2 now and I spent $299 on that um, and that's real real value. Um, uh, so I do hope that there's many many other custom or competitors um, because that's in the best interest of the industry uh, uh, growing and evolving and and that will happen. Yeah, well, and yeah, I just and, echo, yeah. echo those words, you know, that, you know, with Pico getting their act together a little bit. Okay, so, you know, you go from Facebook meta to you know, bike dance and what have you, but that there is more competition coming in. And, and as, you know, Meta is driving the market for better or for worse, and as they drive the market, there'll be more opportunity for other 
um, other providers to come in because the market will be bigger. So, you know, to DJ's point, they're trailblazing, you know, like them, dislike them, whatever. You know, it, it's definitely doing a job for the here and now that I think is is overall benefiting our sector um, more than it's it's sort of a negative. Okay, let's go to the next question. Aaron. Hello. Um, so, yeah, I was, uh, I haven't been on here in a while. But anyway, uh, I was going to say that uh, one cool thing about uh, virtual reality is that you can wear 3D glasses in it. And I've been uh, making those for my art gallery and stuff. And, like, I make 3D art. I also sometimes draw uh, AI generated stuff, I, and I draw hand draw it myself. And make some, but except when I draw it, it becomes 3D or 3D glasses, and the and the reference image is not 3D. <laughs> I, I'm, well, I anyway. agree with you. I'm I love to draw too, and um, I always used to do oil painting and and pencil sketches, and then tilt brush came around, and I. I was like, wow, this is super, super cool. So one of my favorite things to do in VR is drawing. Um, and yeah. I think, oh, but I actually do uh, my drawings mostly in uh, real life and draw that way. Sure. Hi, so um, just a quick question regarding interoperability between various metaverses and standardization. Do you guys see any efforts being made by the industry in that direction? Um, yeah. Sure. I mean, the the it falls in the whole category of Web three, and definitely the whole industry, and uh, it's all going in that direction. Um, so we we do have we are active in that space. Um, we've done several different deployments uh, in the crypto genre with the uh, galleries for NFTs, as well as. Uh, creation of NFTs and then education of uh, the space. And I think that blockchain um, verification is going to be, you know, a huge component of the metaverse uh, because it validates identity and gives a financial marketplace. So. And we've, um, we've joined the, gosh, I'm, I'm terrible. I forget the name the metaverse forum. It's the, the metaverse the standards forum. Yeah, I was just going to. Diverse standards yeah. forum. So we're members of that, um, you know, so all those, you know, organizations are kind of interesting. I think there's a couple popped up now, so you don't want them to be competing. But, you know, they're starting to get to that point where they're, they're talking about interoperability, persistence, all these sorts of things. So, you know, it's early stages. I, I would just say, you know, look at the challenges that we've had to sort of, you know, put any standards and, you know, operability, interoperability around the internet and sort of manage that. It's taken a while. So, you know, bear with it. Because it's going to be, I think, a fairly long time and perhaps a little bit bumpy. But people are at least properly thinking about those those things now. Yeah. Um, One thing you yeah, so the... might want to have a look around USD, and it's kind of the equivalent. You know, HTML is how we create web pages on the internet. And USD is a language that was created originally by Pixar. And it's a very good competitor to becoming like the universal description language for 3D scenes and environments to make it easier to have all of your 3D data compatible from one environment to the next. But as James and DJ were saying, it's right now we are at the stage where we are setting the foundations of the house and, and it's all going to come together in the next few years. Yeah, um, the World Wide Web Consortium also have something called the um, uh, the um, immersive web working group, uh, and they're working they're working on standards for uh, accessing immersive content through your web browser, and they're developing something called the WebXR device API. So definitely look into that um, because um, to me that's the true nature of of where like the metaverse will um, will go. Um, in terms of being interoperable um, between platforms. So look at that as well. So there's a lot of different initiatives going on. Um, the, the Metaverse Standards Forum is definitely an important one because that is being led also by all like the big tech companies that are kind of working together towards this as well. Um, do we want to do one more question? This one, yes. 
All right. Um, I F E. I don't know how to pronounce that. For it. A fee, a fee, an old fee. All right, thank you very much. Um, I couldn't hear the um, others as they asked the questions, but I'll just ask mine. Um, okay, as a computer science graduate, I just recently finished school. And I'm interested in going into augmented reality, virtual reality, and the metaverse. So um, I don't know if there are any opportunities for people like me who just finished um, from college and are looking to get to the metaverse, a career in the metaverse, basically. That's what options are like, there when you come out of university, right? To uh, to look yeah. at it. Uh, what did you study, Ify? Okay, I studied computer science. Okay. I, mean, I think this is a good use case. You want to talk a little bit about talk a little bit about the uh, programs we've got? That'd be good. Yeah. Um, so we actually one of our entities is called XR Terra. Um, and they specifically uh, do workshops and, and programs to um, uh, get people into the industry, either on design or development side of things. Um, that's a really great way to kind of augment uh, your knowledge. But then I think that even beyond those additional workshops, I just say start building your own portfolio. Um, you know, build and learn as much as you can and then also join these types of communities and network and go to meetups um, and then seek out some kind of internship uh, within with uh, an organization in the space to, to get your foot in the door um, but the first first and foremost is just start building you know start building your own portfolio of, of your work play around 100 all right thank you very much all right okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the questions. I uh, really love, like, we always have tons of questions. We always try to make space, but um, unfortunately, we're out of time for this. So, Michelle, if you can. Yeah, there is, um, there is a link above, uh, above the screen. Yes. If you have further questions, please click on the link above the screen. If you're in a PC or Mac, you will take you right to the LinkedIn chat room to be able to ask your questions. Uh, if you're on a quest, then just take a picture of the link and you can go to message and take you directly there to be able to ask more questions. Yeah, and right, we'll be so... hanging around for a little bit as well after this. Um, I think DJ and James will be around, so um, you yeah. feel free to go up to them and, and bother them too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so now it's time for the breakouts. Uh, to the side here, we've got breakout rooms. We're gonna be hanging out um, for the first breakout. The first, you know, we like to have a discussion question. First question is, what is the most innovative use case you have ever seen for immersive technology, and you know, why did it matter? Or why did it make a difference for you? I suggest, guys, how about DJ James? You go to one of the booths here go to another one and you know feel free to hang out and we can continue the conversation in the breakout time sure thanks a lot right. perfect Thanks, guys <laughs>